psychology plays a role in baseball. And one example is with umpiring. We have here a plot of the strike zone, and we also have a measure of the strike zone as measured by the calls of umpires. These particular strike zones reflect the strike zones after a missed pitch. So a pitch would have either been in the strike zone but was called a ball by the umpire, or the pitch was outside the strike zone and was called a strike. Now the umpire may or may not have been aware that he missed the call. But let's take a look at the two different strike zones. The inner zone, the one that is all cross-hatched, is the strike zone where the previous pitch was a ball that was actually called a strike. And so you can see the umpire is being a little pickier. You can sort of think of it as being a makeup. That the umpire's strike zone has shrunk a little bit because he was relatively generous with the previous call. But on the other hand, if the umpire's call on the previous pitch was a ball that was actually a strike, you can see as evidenced by the dark area outside the hatched area that that area is now within the strike zone. So the umpire is likely to call a ball there a, a strike, a pitch that shows up in anywhere in the hatched area or in the gray area is likely to be called a strike. So the umpire is perhaps subconsciously making decisions about whether a pitch is a ball or a strike based on the previous pitch. Let's take a look at the strike zones for counts where the batter is down 0-2 or the count where the batter is up three balls and no strikes. And we'll start first with the situation where the batter has two strikes and no balls, and you can see that the inner strike zone, the cross-hatched area, is relatively small. So it's almost like the umpire is trying to take the decision about the fate of that batter out of the umpire's hands. So forcing the pitcher to throw a pitch that is uh, well over the plate, and so the batter has a reasonable chance of putting the ball in play. So the strike zone is much smaller when the count is 0-2 compared to the much enlarged strike zone. So now it's all of the area that includes both the cross-hatched area and the gray area. So that becomes the size of the strike zone if a batter is 3-0. So again, the umpire is trying to avoid, probably subconsciously, giving the batter a free ride to first with a walk, forcing the batter to uh, either put the ball in play or um, at least take a strike. And here we can look at an overview. So we're looking at a number of different uh, counts here, but always they're going to be three balls or always they're going to be two strikes. So if the count is 3-0, and 3-1, oh, and one, or full, then the strike zone is relatively large, so it includes the area cross-hatched as well as the gray area. But if a batter has two strikes, so if the count is 0-2 or 1-2 or 2-2, and or and then the umpire is going to be a little pickier about what constitutes a strike. Um, and of course, when the count is full, then the, uh, the umpire is conflicted. But at any rate, the umpires, again, probably subconsciously, are making decisions about whether or not a ball that is close to the margins of the strike zone is, in fact, a ball or a strike, depending upon either the current count or whether or not he happened to miss uh, the previous pitch.